Is this going to make any difference? I think it, I think it will. It doesn't help with the train strike, of course, um, in terms of numbers. But I think the fact that this is being led not so much from Don't Extradite Assange again, um, but the National Union of Journalists and the International Federation of Journalists, which has 600,000 members globally, are uh, leading this exercise means you know the penny is dropping that this is not a, you know this is political. This. This puts journalism in the firing line. Um, if Assange goes down, journalism goes down. You know, we're not going to have any can, more. Can you bring us up to date on what is the, the position with Julian Assange? Where is he now and what is his legal status and what is likely to happen next? Well, he's obviously been in Belmarsh for three and a half years um, and, and there's another appeal so to, to the High Court. So if that's exhausted, I would assume they would go to the European Court of Human Rights, but um, there's another appeal going on. And, and the, the campaign is to uh, stop extraditing him. Correct, yeah. Who is seeking to? Well, well, the British government have agreed, you know, Pretty Patel, one of her last firing shots was to, to approve his extradition. So that's to, now... To the United States. To the United States. United States. Yeah, to mm -hmm. face 175 years imprisonment, you know, for, for telling the truth. So, you know, for a journalist that tells the truth. But it's telling the truth by... Th through the leak of classified documents. Well, I mean, I mean that's, that's, that's the argument, isn't it? But that's, that's what, you know, we got used to. We got, there was a privilege in the past for journalists to feel protected, that they could release information. And Assange wasn't the gatherer of the information. He was always, you know, had an anonymous drop box. He received information and he released it. You know, he worked in partnership with The Guardian, The New York Times. On what he's been criminalised for, uh, he was working with a whole variety of international media, yet he's the guy on the firing line. Why yeah. is that then? Well, because some of the things he did allegedly put other people in danger. But even that's been debunked now. You know, they said, oh, he was recklessly putting out the names of people. Um, all that is not true. He redacted it all. It wasn't him that even did that. And that's all now been proven. You know, and even the, the case that America has in terms of extraditing where it will cost all the evidence has crumbled. You know, the, the, the witness has been found to be a fraudster who is passing off as knowing Julian Assange, working with Julian Assange. I mean, the whole thing is a shambles. But do, well, shambles. Do, well, I mean, I know he doesn't want to go to court, he doesn't want to face this. I get, I get that. But isn't there... That, aren't you making a strong argument for saying, well, if he was extradited, he's, he's going to be cleared anyway? I don't think he, he's in that... He's not really in a safe place. I mean, uh, we spoke in, in July about oh. this, and I said that, you know, if he went to America, who's to say this so-called, you know, suicide risk doesn't become a, a suicide that... I mean, the CIA have been uh, involved in, in a case where Pompeo's been called for an attempt at murdering Assange, and it's not just willy-nilly mad stuff. It's serious evidence has been produced on that. And if he was in an American prison, you know... What would happen to him, literally? What is, other his, Epstein situation what is his mental really? state at the moment? Well, I mean, the European, you know, the, sorry, the United Nations Special Rapporteur on Torture has visited him many times and, and said he's been psychologically tortured. Um, his wife, Stella Assange, has said that he's really, really um, upbeat as much as he can about today because he sees that there's hope. Um, but, you know, he is, he's not in a good place overall. No, not at all. I mean, the, the judge, Vanessa Barrister, first said he won't go to America because of his mental state, and that got overturned. Why on earth could that get overturned? I don't know. But, I mean, he's in the same position now as he was. But that's what I mean. It's been foreshadowed that he's suicidal, and, and what if... What, what, <laughs> If we hear that he commits suicide, would it be at his, at his own, own hand? And I'll tell you what, he's safer here than he is over there, that's for sure. It's, the problem is a lot of people don't have a lot of sympathy for him. Now, whether that's right or wrong, but you must... Un, you know, that, that's no, a brutal reality, isn't it? Because he was seen to be... If, if the rest of us are accused of something, rightly or wrongly, we have to go through the process. Now, he was seen as dodging that process by, you know, locking himself in the embassy for years and all the rest of it. Now, that's eroded a lot of, a lot of support for him. Uh, I think part of the, the project to annihilate him has been to totally smear him from sex scandals to everything else. So everyone, all his support dropped away. He had loads of supporters prior to the whole sex scandal, which was, in my opinion, manufactured. And, 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 but there's, there's just a labyrinth of smear put on him. But he's on the Asperger's 
spectrum. You know, mm. this is a person who just wants to leak the truth, non-partisan at all costs. He's probably the only person that you classify as a true journalist in the sense he doesn't editorialise everything. Everything's just put up there. It really is inconvenient Except for that everybody. Except now he would be seen as a security risk by both the American government and ours. Well, that, and other countries. That, that is the circular debate on this. That it, isn't it our right to know, you know, aren't the voters due to know what's going on? Um, what, the last video he ever had shot, um, it was at a security conference, and he gave it to me while I was working for him. and said, get it out there. And it's actually, if you Google it and go on Mail Online and Julian Assange and World Ethical Data Forum, you can see his last ever talk. And he said, we are the last generation to be free. And I say, if he goes down, we're in a situation where no one knows what's going on. But, yeah, you're right, he's very unfiltered, and that's always yeah. been the problem for everybody. Yeah, yeah. I mean, which, which raises the question... I mean, it's, it's very difficult to say, it's, and it, it gets a bit nuanced, but some journalism has to be filtered to an extent. Does that? I mean, that's part of it. That's part of the issue. Well, legally, it has to for national yeah, security. But I think uh, you'll be surprised how you know he's a family man. How much concern and care for what what they're trying to do for 175 years? He took meticulous detail to redact everything, and part of their evidence was saying he's a reckless maverick. Yeah. And that wasn't true. So, so you'll be surprised that even in his efforts to leak, which the Guardian were part of. Mm. You know, the New York Times yeah, yeah. were part of. He was the one doing all the, the redaction. Not, it's the opposite to what everyone's saying.